Hey, we're finally getting to sausage time on the farm. That's a big time. I understand that um, I'm going to speed this video up a little bit so I don't bore you with all the little details. But we got a pile of pork and we've got piles of venison. Now the pork is from when we butchered the pork a little while back. And what we're going to make here is we're going to make some wieners. I'm using Sausage Maker, uh, their wiener recipe. We're also going to use um, tailgating bratwurst recipe by P.S., um, and we're also going to use Sausage Maker's um, natural summer sausage recipe for summer sausage. And we're not going to make three things. We're actually going to make four because we're also doing ground venison hamburger. And that's got no pork in it. So here I'm adding the correct amounts of meats to, to, to the bin that's sitting on a scale. And what I'm doing is I'm actually doing seven pounds of deer to three pounds of pork for my hot dogs. Again, this is pork that we, we butchered here on our place from our pigs and deer that we've been blessed to, to get. So again, when I'm making my hot dog recipe, it's going to be seven pounds of venison, three pounds of pork. And I'm going to technically in this case double it because um, uh, I'm going to I'm going to make, you know, two of them. And then the tailgater one, which comes in this little bag here, that is made for 25 pounds of meat. So I have to do just a little math because I'm only going to make 20 pounds of meat with it. I'm going to do two sets of, 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 of bratwurst if you want to think about it that way. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of math. But again, I'm going to do the batches the same way. I'm going to put seven pounds of venison in and three pounds of pork. I weigh it all out and make sure I get it right. And then I just do the calculations. Now, on the, on the bratwurst, um, we're just going to use the uh, tailgater uh, PS seasoning spices and then we're going to go right to the freezer with those. They're going to be, you know, made and then frozen. And then we'll cook fully when we use it. The hot dogs, um, we're going to do kind of the same thing with. And then the summer sausage, we're going to smoke. So you're going to see a little bit of difference there. So again, i am got the pork bowl out here and I'm getting the three pounds, three pounds of pork in to make sure I get, get my weights right, okay? Then once I get that done, I move on to this green capped one. That's the summer sausage. And again, I'm making, I'm making big batches here of summer sausage, so I get a lot of sticks. I'm making my sticks about 18 to 20 inches long. Um, and the family here is all helping me, so we're kind of doing multiple things. So as I'm trying to get the amounts that I need for my three different meats, my wieners, my brats, and um, my summer sausage, the kids are going to take the extra venison, and they're going to do a straight grind, no pork in it at all. And that's going for burger, which is fantastic. So, and we're going to put that in one and a half pound bags, that venison burger. And we're going to put them in and we're going to kind of flatten them out. And we're going to put them in the freezer to make chilies and all sorts of good stuff with that. So the um, size of the batches, you know, again, if I want to make a triple batch, okay, it's 21 pounds of, of, of venison and nine pounds of pork. Again, everything is seven and three for me. That's worked out really well in the past, and I, I really like doing that way. So I'm going to continue to do it that way. As far as smoking goes, I'm going to use um, hickory. Uh, that's what I like to make my summer sausage with. The kids like to call the summer sausage circle meat because we slice it up on our slicer and we eat it throughout the whole year for sandwiches and other things. But it's just a nice summer sausage recipe. These are kind of the spices that I like best. I, I really like the natural summer sausage recipe with, with the celery salts. I like their, their wiener recipe at Sausage Maker. Um, comes in bulk packaging so I can get a lot out of it. At this point, I'm going to start working with um, the spices. And the first one I got in my hands here is the tailgater. I'm going to dump it all in and then I'm going to pull out until I get to the right quantity that I want. Because um, again, remember this package is for 25 pounds of meat. I'm not doing 25 pounds of meat. So I'm going to do it only for 20 pounds of meat. That's going to leave me a little bit, a little bit extra. So I'm going to, I'm going to take that back out. And then once I got that, I divided it into two quantities so I can put it into each of my two batches. Another reason that I like the seven and the three pound method is because my mixer takes about 10 pounds of meat really nicely. It'll go up to 15 pretty easy, but 20 gets hard. It gets hard on your arms to mix it up. It's filled right up to the top. It's just, I don't know if it does quite as well. So what I'm doing here is I'm just balancing out the spice right with a scale. Highly recommend some good scales if you're going to be making your own meats. 
And then, then that'll help you as far as, you know, making sure you're accurate and so forth. Now, when I make my spices up and I get them there, um, like this one here, I'm just making up. And now I'm going over to the uh, wiener one here. When I make these up, I like to then put the water in them and let them kind of dissolve. So that way, when I want to mix them in with the meat, they go in a little easier. Right here, you see me putting the uh, celery salt in. That is called for on the wiener recipe. Um, and a lot of times the hot dogs are smoked. This time I'm not. It's uh, three quarters of an ounce that I'm putting in there. And, and that's fine. Um, you know, follow the recipes, guys. Um, I know some recipes call for, you know, number one and number two cures or the pink salts. Do what you got to do. Um, so here I'm now I'm just putting in the um, hot dog spices. And again, this is for, for that 10-pound batch of meat. Everybody's a little different on what they use, okay? Um, and now I'm going to actually make up the one for the summer sausage. And again, I'm making it up in multiple bowls, even though it may not look like it. Um, I'm just doing that because I've got these 10-pound batches of it. As far as um, putting everything together math-wise, it just takes me a minute or two. That's why you see me whacking away on the calculator. i got to make sure I get the right amount of salary salt in um, so that I get a good cure going. Um, and then once I got that down, which is about one ounce, it says 1.1, but again, hair heavy isn't going to hurt on that. So, um, then I can put my regular spice in and once I get that in there, then I'm really good to go. I put the liquid with it, mix it in with the meat, and then I do a, at least a 24 hour holdover so that all that cure gets in and, and good with the meat. Um, when I do that, I put these in the fridge and you'll see that I'll, I'll saran wrap these up and do it. So right now I'm just finishing my last set of spice and while I'm doing that, these guys are down on the floor behind me grinding up the burger. I'm putting labels here on things just so I know which bowl of spice is which as I, as I make them up. And these guys are down on the floor and they're, they're grinding that burger up. So we're really killing kind of a couple different tasks at once. As far as casings go, um, I'm going to do the hot dogs with a synthetic casing because they're smaller and I, I enjoy those better. Um, I'm going to do the brats with a 32 millimeter hog casing because I like that. Um, I'm going to have to try to get some of the stuff, you know, um, videoed for you, but I'm not going to spend, you know, the four or five hours it takes to do all these batches and show you everything being stuffed. But again, this is this is what we do. It works really well. Um, I, I think it works great. So here I'm making up the kind of the last of my summer sausage batches because again, remember I'm doing a couple different batches of that. So I want to make sure that I get things you know done well. Okay, and that's that's kind of what I'm after. Um, once I got all my spices done, then I can just add it to the meats, and I really like that when it works that way. To me, that's to me that's the best way of doing it. So I'm doing a little bit of math on the calculator, make sure I'm not screwing it up. Um, it's kind of important to get, get these numbers right and turned out to be just perfect there. Um, just going through the container and making sure the numbers work out mathematically. Label it up. Now my spices are out of the way. As far as grinding plates go, um, hamburger, we grind through that little one eighth inch hole one. Um, my kids here, I got one kid running the pedal, another one running the meat grinder itself. So hamburger, I don't do a double grind. I just put it through that it's straight venison. We've taken most of the, you know, parts of it out that we don't like. So it's pretty much just meat. And we're just stuffing it through at a one eighth inch grind. Now, on the summer sausage, I'm going to take that one and put it through a coarse grind of probably a one inch hole versus this is a one eighth inch hole. I'm going to put it through the one inch hole first, kind of get everything to confabulate together. Then I'm going to turn right around without adding my spices and I'll run it through the one eighth inch hole. Um, bratwurst, I just like to do the one eighth and the hot dogs, I like to do the one eighth. So I don't typically double grind those. Now, if you really want that, you know, fake synthetic hot dog, which is really uniform inside, go ahead and do a double grind on that. You'll get that. But I don't really want that. I want my brats and my hot dogs to have that same kind of consistency. And when I make my bratwurst up, you know, I'll, I'll do that, you know, in the standard size. But when I make my hot dogs up, I'll do it in you know, thin um, little synthetic tubes. And then I'll also make it like a farmer sausage in a big ring that we can cook up in big old boiling water. Um, I'll show you that in a minute too. It's essentially still though the wiener recipe, um, even though my family calls it farmer sausage, it's just because of how I package it. So right now I just added two cups of water to that spice. 
This is, I think, the tailgater one. And then I mix it up really good, and then I just let it sit. So two cups of water to the tailgater, and then each of the batches of the other, which again is, is made for 10 pounds of meat, I add two cups of water to those too. So here they are still grinding away, and they're starting to weigh out the bags. They're getting a pound and a half in each Ziploc. Once they got a pound and a half in each Ziploc, then they flatten them out, make sure they're labeled up, and then they're ready for the freezer. Um, we were blessed with three out of five deer this year. That's That was wonderful. Um, two is, is just making it. Three is a blessing. And four and five is just, you know, a massive amount. So this is the wieners. Um, we're going to put the two cups into this batch. And again, I've got a couple of these to do. But again, each batch is set up for 10 pounds of meat. And then um, we're going to get that stirred up. You can tell the difference between them. the tailgater. There's much more tan. That wiener stuff is a little bit more dark and red, um, so you can see that there. Um, and then we're also going to then get the um, uh, summer sausage one going, and that's this one here. And again, two cups to each 10-pound batch. And as far as water goes, you can use distilled water if you're worried about getting bacteria from your tap water. Um, I've got an RODI unit, so I like to use that water. But this makes a nice... Um, liquid solution for me to pour it in when I'm mixing and that's what I want because I want my spices to get everywhere especially with the summer sausage I got my cure in there and with the wieners and I want that to go everywhere too so again you got to add you got to add several cups to these to, to get them you know where you want um, two cups to each each pail and then we're pretty much ready on on the spices and I think that works I think that works really well for me I will add a little bit more water when I'm stuffing the wieners into the small casings because if I don't keep that lubricated, it's kind of hard on my um, my sausage stuffer to, to keep that going, okay? So that's just, that's just the way that one goes. Now that one you saw there, I added several cups of two cups to it, but that's got uh, 20 pounds of meat mix in this one. I was running out of bowls, so I had to kind of squeeze that one in. So that one's got a little extra water, but it had twice as much spice in it, folks. And you can see they're still on the floor there, stuffing away hamburger for the day, which is the way it goes. And these are all kind of the fun and easy parts, making batches of this. Got tailgater, got my wiener, got my summer sausage. It's all set to go. They're packing away hamburger on the floor here, getting ready to put that in the fridge. Remember, that's 100% venison burger. That's just freaking awesome. So these guys are getting all that stuff going. So next is where the work comes in, because I don't have a motor on it. I've got to get the mixes all mixed together. So while these guys are going to be doing that, I'm going to put up here on the shelf my big mixer. Again, it says it holds 20 pounds. Yes, it can, but it's so much easier with 10. So the meat is nice and pink. I'm just going to put it up in there. I know it's already been weighed out, so I've got the proper quantities. My son is starting to mix it. I put in about half the spice. We mix for a bit. I put another half the spice in. And then we keep mixing. It'll turn nice and dark brown. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put it back into the tub. We'll put shrink wrap over it and we'll get it into the fridge and let it sit for a day. I feel like that just brings out the flavor better. Um, I've tried doing it more speedily and fast and I don't like quite how it tastes. I think that overnight really does help. So again, he's just going to keep cranking away here. I'm going to put that batch of meat in here, get that good 10 pounds in here. And then in go all the spices. And then now all those spices are just going to give it flavor. And, of course, with the wiener recipe and with the um, summer sausage, the cure is in there too. Um, not so much with the brats. The brats is just the spices, and then they're going to be stayed frozen. Now, granted, I'm going to freeze the summer sausages and the wieners too, so there's a little fear there. But, again, those recipes call for it. So I just pour it in. You see it's kind of a thicker solution. Towards the end, you just kind of got to dump it because you want to get all your spices in. And then he just keeps mixing. And then after a while, oh, I'd say 15, 20 minutes of mixing, we dump it all out. And you can see it's turned much darker with the spices. I put it into the tub, and then I start shrink wrapping away and, and letting it age for a day, if you want to think of it that way. I do wash out the tub in between batches. I don't want mixed flavors. Sometimes I've made some, you know, maple products and stuff. And when you do that, oh, you don't want to make, you know, like, maple breakfast sausage and then turn around and make your summer sausage and 
pick up a hint of maple in your summer sausage. I mean, it's not a killer, don't get me wrong, but it, it's not really what you want to do. So then I get it all shrink wrapped up here the best I can. I put some shrink wrap actually on the meat and then I, I go over the top of the container. Maybe it's overkill, but I like to make sure it doesn't dry out overnight. It isn't going to stuff well if it dries out. Trust me on that one. Not cool. Now, it's all brown right now, and it will stay brown wherever it contacts the air, but the inside will turn back to a pink color here after a while. So don't let that scare you when you go to, to, to making your stuffing and you're digging into it to load your stuffer and you realize that it looks more red back in the center of your pile. That is quite natural when you're working with the cures. And then again, next batch, same darn thing. Here I go. Into the, into the tub it goes. Um, I've got to get the 10 pounds in there. And once it's all in there, I'm ready to crank away. Now, when you go and use, um, you know, like a hand crank or a hand mixer, I guess it's just preference as to how, how much you want to put in and how far you want to go. Um, it, it, it's, it's got to do with the visual on that as the best I can say. I've had some people in some of my previous videos on my deer sausage videos and some of those other ones where I've done this, they're like, uh, how do you know you mixed it enough? You know, w w what's your indicator? I, I guess I wish I told you folks, but I can't really tell you. I just, I go by visual on it when it all gets kind of uniform brown, looks like everything's in. I'm not seeing much spices stuck to the stainless steel on the sides of the mixer. We go with it. Um, I'm going to take over here a little bit for my son and just help crank it around a little. He gets tired after a while, but he's a good little kid. He just keeps trying. My littlest one wants to help, but he just doesn't have that size and body yet to help. So Matthias has to wait and Grant gets to help for a little bit. And then I just kind of crank away here. Um, as far as, you know, people ask this, you know, what if you're going to add, you know, your, you know, high temp melt cheese or something like that in there? It's, well, certainly you can. Um, now would be the time that I would do it when you're in this, this part of the mixing phase. What I mean by that is, is I've mixed it a bit, added the spices, added more spices, and then all the other spices are added in at the end here. So I'm, I'm finishing out kind of my, my mix of spices here for this batch. That's when I would add my extra stuff. Like if you were going to do like a special pepper or you're going to do like, you know, a jalapeno cheese or just a cheddar cheese, it's going to melt. I personally don't do that with any of my sausages because some of that stuff has some chemicals in it that I don't like. So it doesn't happen to me. But here we go. I'm going to start dumping this out. Um, I ran out of my gray plastic tins. I need to buy some more of those. I never seem to have enough when I'm processing meat. But either way, um, grab a big roaster and into the roaster it goes. Um, I'll probably have to use two roasters and, you know, divide this in two just to get it in the fridge. Um, you got to have some decent fridge space. Thankfully in Minnesota, if you need to, it, it's cold this time of year and you can stick it in your garage and probably stay good and cold overnight in your garage too. I don't know if everybody's got the luxury of being in an ice box during this time of year, but after deer hunting with us, it's actually pretty cold. So it allows us to, to use that as a, as a means of keeping things cold. I do have enough refrigerators though, so it should work. So I'm probably going to get another roaster, uh, move this over to a roaster, split the batch in half, and then I'll get this sealed up with a stretch type, just like I did the others, and let it sit for a day. So this is going to end up really nice, folks. Absolutely really nice. Now, um, 10 pounds of bratwurst batch probably gives me, I'm going to say maybe eight meals with the seven of us. I would say, obviously, if you're a family of three or four, you're probably going to, you know, get close to doubling that. You'll be that, you know, 12 to 15 or 16 meals. Now, summer sausage, we're shooting for a good 16 to 18 uh, 18 inch long logs out of out of a couple batches so that would be two batches of 10 and 10 that should get me at least hopefully that that amount and then in the wiener category it's going to be a little trickier because like I said I'm going to make half into the traditional thin little hot dogs I'm going to make the other half into like a farmer sausage ring and I'm hoping to get like four or five meals of farmer sausage out of it and then uh, three or four meals of hot dogs out of it so and, and again, that's, you know, that's debatable, you know, um, as to how I actually put it into the casings as to which way that goes. So for me, there will be um, at least two batches that I'll case up for summer sausage, one batch for brats, and I'll probably do two for the wieners here. That's what it's going to end up being to give me those kind of quantities. 
So I got my daughter, Julia. She's cranking away. I'm going to take over of her again, too. Again, everybody gets tired on the cranking part. It's it's the most amount of work. Next time I ever get one of these mixers, I'll invest in the motor and put a motor on one of these devils and, and do it differently. But for right now, she's done she's done the hand style. We just hand crank, hand crank, hand crank, hand crank. And that seems to do the best for us. I think personally it's good exercise, but you know what? After you've done this for a few hours in the day, it gets a little old, let's face it. But... That's part of processing your own meat, processing your own deer, and so forth. So I think it's good. So we're going to dump this batch out now. Um, Anna's going to help me get it out here. We're going to get this batch um, out. Um, this is summer sausage. You can see summer sausage is a little bit more sticky. It's just got to do with the spices and how it goes together. That's just the way it is. Don't let that scare you folks when you're working with it. Um, some sausages are more dry. Some sausages are more sticky. It's got to do with your spice mixes that you buy. Um I don't know, just the way it goes. You can see that the inside of this is lined with a little bit more fat. Um, that's just because, again, the way those spices and stuff coated it when we did it. So, again, the summer sausage and the um, the uh, wieners have the cure in them, which for me is is, is the celery, um, the celery salt stuff. Uh, people ask every now and then where I buy mine from. I buy the veggie stable. Um, it's a product sold online. It comes with how much to put per pounds of meat in to replace the uh, pink um, salts or the number one or number two cures. Um, I'm not really against at all number one and number two cures. Um, I understand that you need some type of uh, sodium type product like that um, in the nitrate line to make it work. But I don't like the pink dye. So that's what I'm trying to avoid. So everybody's a little different in how they do things. Um, I'm not um, I'm not worried about using um, the celery salt. It works well. I've also got the double backup that my stuff is frozen, and um, I'm doing a good job of putting it together and making it work. So I'm real pleased with how things are going here. So as we move forward, I'm going to get these things in the refrigerator, and we're going to call it a night. We're going to come back tomorrow, so you're going to kind of see things kind of change as position here. So here I'm back the next day. I'm loading the stuffer. And the first cone I got on, it has that metal extension on it. That metal extension works really good for making hot dogs and putting on those synthetic casings that you can eat that are edible. I like the LEM. That's the one I like to use, LEMs. And I find that it goes on there really good and it comes off really nicely. And then we can just pop right through those casings when we eat it. Now, if you don't like the casing either way, you can just peel them off your hot dogs. But for me, the edible synthetic casing is the one I like the best when it comes to hot dogs. Now, bratwurst, I like just a natural hog casing I like to use. See, I added a little water there to that. That's because with hot dogs, I got to go through this small tube, and I don't want to hurt my motor, um, and I want it to come out fairly easily. So now it's just a matter of stepping on the pedal, getting the plunger going, and um, getting, some, getting some hot dogs made. Uh, I tend to tie my hot dogs on each end with string, and in the middle, we just do twists. You'll see my daughter Anna here doing that. I think everybody's a little different. Uh, with the summer um, sausage, I'll use staples on each end of the casings. And with the bratwurst, a lot of times we're going to, again, tie the ends and just twist. So here I am. I'm getting on the synthetic lems here. I'm trying to get myself some room so I can work and I can get this thing going. Because once it starts coming out, you know, it's pretty easy to make hot dogs. So to me, the most amount of work is just mixing this stuff. As you saw the other day, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time mixing. When we start actually casing things up, that's the fun part. It goes pretty fast, goes pretty fun. Um, it's enjoyable to see it come together. Smoking isn't tough, folks. Um, I got a stick bur burner smoker, um, and th th that's a Lang. It's a great big sucker. I get my wood fired up on it, bring it up to 200 some degrees, maybe two, two and a quarter. Stick them in there, probably say from three o'clock till maybe six, seven, three hours. I got all my summer sausage smoked. If I want to smoke my brats, I can toss them in there for a little bit. Um, it's really that's really the enjoyable parts. Um, the work is obviously skinning the deer, chopping up all the meat, and and the mixing of the product. So here I'm just making hot dogs. Again, we'll twist them in a bit. I found the success to the twisting to be to not overstuff these casings. Otherwise, when my daughter goes to, to twist them, she's got no room. So I find that I just kind of keep things moving along. I don't let the casing get real taut. That way, when she does her twists, it'll get more taut, and we won't break casings as much. Um, my uh, Uncle Jim kind of taught me that. You know, you stuff a casing too tight, you're going to have some issues. So I don't really stuff them very tight. 
think what I'm going to do here is just get this one rolled together. We'll get it on one of our whiteboards, and then she'll start putting it together for us. So should work out really, really well. Um, we get several mules out of a roll like this, and this is half of a section of that you know synthetic edible casing from LEM. So it's not the it's not the whole piece, if you know what I mean. It's just part of it. So here we go. We got got it on here. I'm just going to finish this out. And then my daughter is going to come in next to me and she's going to get the twisting going. I'm going to put the larger cone on, bring out my um, casings here. And I've got a pail sitting there um, full of water there. And I'm putting the casings in the water. I've already separated them. I'm just getting the salt off the casings. When I get done with my butchering and I scrape out and clean out my casings, I preserve them in a salt water solution. And then I rinse that off several times before we go to make um, the bratwurst so that you don't get, you know, like a salty outside to it. So here I'm just threading it onto the machine. This is probably about an inch cone to inch and a quarter. I can't exactly remember. It came with the stuffer, but I like this size for, for doing the, for doing the, the, the bratwurst. Now I'm going to use there's wiener in here, remember, not bratwurst. So I am using the hog casings that I would use for bratwurst. Um, but remember, I still got wiener in the machine. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to finish out my wieners in like a farmer sausage style here. And that's what I like to do. I'm going to tie the end of this off and I'm going to give Anna, oh, probably close to 30 inch, you know, um, pieces. Uh, they're at least two feet. Um, let's put it that way. And then she'll tie these into a loop, into a ring. And then we'll have like um, like a farmer's sausage. So out of the wiener recipe, I make both of these, but I use my brat casings, like I said. So here I go. This is the same casing I'm going to use for bratwurst, but I'm going to make a really nice long tube. Um, and I'm going to make it for, like I said, more of like a farmer's sausage ring. Um, if I could get a larger casing, a natural casing, I'd probably do it. I can get larger synthetic casings, but we don't care for that quite as much. On, on the on the farmer sausage stuff so um, different recipes exist for farmer sausage I just like the wiener recipe for the farmer sausage um, it boils up well it's easy to put in a pot so there's one of them and I'm just gonna kind of keep going here and, and keep pushing these things out and then when I get done with this then I'll use the same end on my stuffer I'll use the same casings and I'll just switch the meat batch over to the tailgating brats and then I'll just do the exact same thing and stuff out the brats. So once I get the length right, it's just a matter, again, putting the, the two ties on with the string. And, uh, you know, we're ready to go. The way we'll cook this up is we'll just get hot boiling water on the stove. We'll take this ring and just drop it into it. And, uh, you know, we'll boil these suckers right up, get them nice and hot and, and cook them good. And then, you know, at the dinner table, we just slice these up maybe every three or four inches. People take them, put them on bread, eat them, ketchup, mustard, you know, um, you know, whatever type of, you know, like barbecue sauce they want and they eat them that way. And, and again, the hot dogs just put in a hot dog bun and eat, eat like regular hot dogs. So Hannah's getting the hot dogs done here. I'm getting the farmer sausage done, but it's all done with the wiener recipe. Um, we will take both of these products, put them in vacuum sealer, and we will freeze these. So, yes, you can smoke them. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, they got the cure in it if you wanted to do that. I'm just not going to because I don't want them as dry, and I find that with this recipe it's got good flavor. I don't even need the smoke. Now, some people do add liquid smokes to these too. Whoop, I had a casing blow out there. That happens. It's just going to be a shorter tube. That's all right. That's the way that goes. I'll tie that off and we'll make a shorter tube of it. Um, when you're using natural hog casings, sometimes, folks, that's going to happen. Um, so I'm going to skip ahead here to the, the summer sausage part because I'm not going to bore you with the bratwurst. Again, it's the same idea except for I'm twisting them smaller and I'm using that other spice recipe. I'm going to go right ahead to the summer sausage. The video is getting a little long. Certainly don't need to bore you with all the small details. This is a two and a half. Um, edible synthetic casing if you want it. Um, I have non-edible casing too that you can use, um, but I like the two and a half size. That two and a half inch diameter makes a really nice summer sausage. I like to put um, the, the metal clips on these. I'm putting a lot of pressure on the end of them. I find sometimes that if I tie them with the string, it will blow out when I'm doing it. Um, the size of the cone is a little bit bigger. Um, I think this is a one and three quarter or two inch a cone on the stuffer um, and um, 
that makes it really fast stuff to make the summer sausage. So here I got my first tube done. Hopefully I'll make another 15, 16 of these. And these are all going to go right into the smoker today. Probably take me from, may I say, three hours to get to my finish temp. My finish temp for my summer sausage is 155. I do the smoker at a pretty steady 200 to 225. I can't regulate it perfect because I'm using a laying stick burner um, for a smoker. People that have electric ones or pellets can probably regulate that temp a little better. Um, but for me, I, I can't quite do it that way. So first one's done. I'm getting her hair together. It looks beautiful. Next one's up. Um, as you notice, I do take these casings and I get them wet. I feel that when they're wet, they're more pliable. They're easier to stuff. I know some people do dry stuff casings. I don't. Um, my casings are all wet. Um, even those little synthetic hot dog ones I was doing, I had gotten those wet with a spritzer before I put them on. I don't dump them in water because I don't want them to expand and lose their shape. But I do spritz them a little bit and I make sure that the tube is wet and it comes out really good. So here again, I'm pressing out another one of these, and I'm just going to do this over and over again. I'm not going to try to show you all this, folks. I mean, literally, we worked um, five, six hours one day, and here in the stuffing area, I think we were in here for a couple hours, and then, you know, it was three hours worth of smoking. It just gets to be uh, a little long. I think you get the gist of, of basically how we're doing it. So next up here, once I get this one done, is I'm going to head over here to the floor. I'm going to try and show you what I got as far as quantity on these. And then we're going to head out to the smoker. Um, I'm real pleased. So this is what I ended up with for summer sausage, all these. And out here I got the laying going. Um, it's about 3 in the afternoon and we're starting to load it up. I'm putting temperature probes in several of them. So that way I can kind of watch my temp. I'm making sure they don't touch in the laying. I don't want them to, to touch each other. So I'm kind of picky about how I place them. That's why you see me placing them and, and not, not my girls. Um, and then basically, again, I'm going to run this up to 200, 225. Three hours later, it was perfect. It hit the right temp. I'm just checking them, making sure my temp's right. My daughter is cooling them off. It's now evening on the farm. It's pretty cold out. I think it's about eight degrees out. So we don't have to ice bath them like some people do. We just stick them outside and it starts cooling down real quick and ending that cooking process. And once we got that cooking process done, and they've cooled down to about room temperature, I would say somewhere between 60 and 70 degrees, I vacuum seal these too because I want them to go the distance. I put two in a thing, sometimes one, but most of the time two in a bag, and I vacuum seal them down. A little bit of waste in the vacuum seal bag, but boy, they do much better going throughout the whole entire 12-month period, and sometimes even into the next year if I don't go through all the sticks, from keeping them from drying out due to freezer burn. So, I mean, you guys can package them any way you want. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I like them to, to go the distance. This is a primary meat source for me for sandwiches and lunches for the seven of us for the next 12 months, possibly more. So um, we, we need it to work out really well. So that's just the way we do it. Um, I know people wrap them up. I know people just put them in straight in the freezer. You can do it either way. My daughter's kind of getting things going here. And uh, my other daughter's inside, and she's already started vacuum sealing these up, which is fantastic. So as she vacuum seals them up, I write what they are and the date on them, and uh, we're good to go. Now, again, these have cooled down quite a bit. Uh, if you vacuum seal them too fast when they're hot and you go stick them in the freezer, you're going to get a lot of condensation on them. So make sure they cool down good for you, folks, and it'll really seal down nice. As you can see, they get really taut. We let that vacuum sealer really pull it down because they're – um, cased meat and they've been smoked there's no worry about any liquid or anything coming out of them so we're just doing this all for prepping for keeping them good in the freezer so it works out really well you can actually fit probably three of these in the bag sometimes even four depending on how you put them in but that's too much for me to eat at once and, and slice up so two works out really well for the family so that's why we do two at a time so Anna's getting these all done here for me um, it's kind of a tedious task um, but, you know, an hour later, we've got everything vacuum sealed up. We got, you know, the summer sausage vacuum sealed up now from being smoked after three hours. All the hot dogs got, got done. And those kind of wieners um, in the uh, farmer sausage ring have all been vacuum sealed up. And um, we've got all the Ziploc bags of hamburger. Um, we don't vacuum seal those. Typically, that stays good enough the way it is with those really nice heavy-duty Ziplocs, and that we find that that does really well for us. 
As far as the other stuff goes on the farm, as far as, you know, like putting it in bags and, you know, um, trying to keep frost freezer burn and stuff away, we do a pretty good job with just the vacuum sealer. Our chicken gets all vacuum sealed too. A lot of people do the heat shrink tubes around the, the chicken. That works, I'm told, really well too. But here we are, I'm packing it all up in my arms and we're taking it over to the freezer here at the house. They got a big upright freezer that's made for being in my garage. I'm just going to set the camera down here so you can see me doing it. And I just stuff this stuff in. And as of right now, this freezer is going to be full. Um, this will have, I think we did 20-some um, one-and-a-half-pound bags of venison straight burger. We've got the 16 um, sticks, 18 inches long, of the summer sausage. We got four or five meals of 10 hot dogs in a meal at least um, of, of the wieners. And then we've also got, I think, four or five meals of the um, uh, farmer sausage, which is the wiener recipe, um, all set to go. This is, this is just a blessing for the farm. Um, it's a good way to use up our pork trimmings. It's a wonderful way to enjoy the deer harvest and teach your kids how to continue to harvest animals and then use them on the farmstead as a primary source uh, of protein throughout the whole winter and into the next summer. So, folks, this is what it looks like in the other freezer. You can see their vacuum sealed up, the farmer sausage, and here are the brats. I hope you enjoyed our video. I know it's a little long, but I wanted to show you as much of the process as I could. Please like and subscribe and continue to follow our channel. Thanks.